Welcome back to another video, it's Bath City Transfer Updates Week 4, we're getting well into the summer now, two signings have been completed, how many more do you think should be and how many of these will come up to be completed. Now we're going to start off not with any sort of rumours but more concrete evidence of what a certain man has said in our head of football operations in David Sharp. Now I think I'll probably do a full reaction to the article and um, series of interviews he's doing with Simon Parker from the TNA. Um, but he said basically, um, to cut a long uh, sort of article short, he said we need to sell to buy this summer, which has backed a lot of debate and controversy and negativity this um, coming days over the social medias about why should we have to sell to buy if Stefan Whoop's putting more money in and if we've got, got a big budget, which I, I understand and I can I can um, I can definitely see the sides to that to that, but to me we do need to sell to buy and it doesn't just mean that our budget's low which it obviously probably isn't as what we would have wanted it to be um, considering we promised a higher budget but at the end of the day I think high budget or not you can't sign players for example we can't go and bring in a Charlie Wyke or you know anyone else in that striker position to compete with Andy Cook until we've got rid of Dane Oliver and Tyler Smith because it's going to cause unrest. It's going to cause um, it's it's going to cause negativity in the dressing room if there's if they're not going to get any minutes whatsoever, and it's going to be harder to move them on. Um, so you, you've got to do that, and there's so many players in our squad that do need to go because they're nowhere near good enough, and then you can replace them once you've got rid of them. Now um, the problem is with that is um, it's it, it's very hard to do. So that's something that could take a while, which would be annoying because, um, you know, for the want of a better word, it would be annoying because we, we want to bring in loads of players, we want to bring them in now. And then another thing is that Alexander, he said when he first came in, the squad was over overinflated. He, he likes a small squad, you're sort of thinking 23-man squad type of thing. And he wants, the probably reason why we didn't re-sign Wadsworth, as frustrating as it is as a fan, we didn't we, we didn't re-sign him was the fact that he wants every player in the squad to be good good enough to come in if there's an injury. Um, so that, that's obviously something he's building towards, and we, we have to sell a few to get that down, so we can bring some in as well. Um, so that that's probably more or less to suit Graham Alexander as well than, than anyone else. And those players who it who it basically said are going, I think uh, Simon Parker said that Odessina and Mac and Oliver are uh, surplus to requirements at the football club, which is uh, interesting. I think Odessina are always going, Oliver as, as well, you know, with his loan. He, he had a couple of spells under Alexander. It, it hasn't worked out and he just doesn't seem good enough. Um, Kerry McDonald, I think we need fresh legs in that midfield for competition with Smallwood and Adam Wilson has never been given a look in, although it'd been very very frustrating if he got given out for a transfer instead of a loan to a National League club because there's definitely a player in there. With the loan situation of Oyogoke, Tariq Wright and I suppose John Tomkinson but we're mainly focusing on Oyogoke and Wright because they're the more realistic options to be renewed, uh, not renewed but to come back to a football club anyway for a second loan. Uh, well, third for Tariq Wright. Um, now, Tariq Wright, um, I'm confused, bemused and for, uh, and ve very angered at the fact that we could be bringing Tariq Wright back because I think he's nowhere near uh, the, the level of what we wanted. The fact that he came in as a second striker to Andy Cook, we had to recruit that because he wasn't good enough. Then he got played in his natural position on the left, on the right, of a bit behind two uh, strikers, behind a striker, weren't, were nowhere near it. And then got converted to a left wing back, and he had some good games there. But for the best spell, it, you know, sometimes I watched him and he didn't look too bothered, which was frustrating. And I think there's so many better options out there. Do you go? Okay, I've said I'd be all for you go. Okay, coming back is the better out there probably. But to get him back would be a good positive. He's versatile. He's got the ability and confidence on the ball to carry it. He's got pace. Um, he needs to work on his physicality. But another loan with, with us would would only help that. Um, but the loan is the problem. It does look like we're focusing on it being a loan, which should be confused. I, I think the thing is, his contract's up um, at Brentford. And if they renew, I think we will try getting back on loan. And if they um, don't renew and they release him, I think we'd then do a lot to try and get him on a free, which we should only be doing, in my opinion. In the know. Now this um this one's a con this is a funny one because I'm not sure whether it's an in the know or ridiculous but um Grant Hall the former Rotherham QPR Middlesbrough thinking at Blackburn uh, 
a, f a few clubs anyway. I don't think he's ever played below the championship, or he hasn't for the last maybe five to ten years, Grant Hall. Now, he's brilliant aerially, um, and, and that's at a championship level as well, so it's at a higher level and he's really good in the air, actually better than Matty Platt statistically, uh, winning his aerial duels. Um, but for me, it's clear that Byrne is the backup, the, the replacement, sorry, for Matty Platt. I mean, David Sharp basically said that in his articles with with uh, Simon Parker basically saying how, how good of a sign he is and the fact that he tried signing him for Mansfield. And Grant Hall is a very slow sort of a centre-back. I don't think he's got much pace. I'd say Neil Burns quicker, Matty Platt's quicker. So he'd be in the centre. And that would be where Neil Burn is if he's the backup. So I, I, to, to Platt. So I don't feel like he... Um, I don't feel like there's any credibility in it because I, I just don't think it would happen. But if it did, I don't think I'd complain because he's got experience, he's got... The link to Middlesbrough, um, but you know he's he's got that um, that clear quality, but there is question marks about it and the fact that he's got he's a sick note. He's always getting injuries, and he's 32, 33 in October. There's a lot of negativity towards that signing as, as it is. So I, I probably would stay away from it if there is any substance to it. Sticking with the in the no front now, the 72 article uh, company, but they, they were reporting it from Bristol Live that Miguel Freckleton um, it sounded really you know uh, luxurious very European very sort of um, tropical sort of a name um, you know really excited there Miguel and then it's Freckleton um, so that there you go but he's 20 he's played 16 games in the National League last season which is already a concern he wants to play football so that immediately draws him away from Bradford City, considering our previous centre-back in Matty Platt left the club because we don't play football. Um, he's quick, he's athletic, um, and you see that when you watch a few clips of him. He, he likes to play out with a ball, um, quite similar to how Ayogoki was towards the back end of the season, but on the left side. Um, so I won't be against it if it's a permanent, because, you know, back up to Kelly... I feel like he's someone who you can develop and I feel like he's someone who's good enough to come in as a backup um, at the age of 20. It would be a deal I would actually look to do if I were Bradford City. And it, it, it often said on transfer updates where I would agree with a, with a rumour, uh, whether it's credible or not, I'm not too sure. But let's get into one which I wouldn't uh, want us to go and sign. Charlie Jolly. Um, I wouldn't be jolly if we signed him. It's it's an offer from me, Charlie. Um, he's made we've made an approach for him apparently, uh, but he don't fit. He don't fit. He don't fit us. Um, obviously you've got Andy Cook, and we need a target man to support Andy Cook. And then you've got Young Cavanaugh on, on that side, and he would be the backup to Young Cavanaugh. You don't need three of them. So I'd be against it just sh surely for that. But um, I think he's just. You know, Tranmere fans when they released him, so not happy about it, but they didn't think nothing of him to be honest. That they're sort of saying that there's not too much to talk about with Charlie Jolly. He's just an all right player. Um, it seems like his injury killed his career. I don't want to say that, but it there's been a drop off. Was it 21, 22? There were a bit of hype around him and um, a good young player coming through got injured and he hasn't been the same player for Tranmere since then. I think he got eight goals though this season. But he seems to be a bit of a poacher type of a player. He's got a bit of decent pace about him to stretch the defence, but you need to create a load of chances and put them on a plate for him. But, you know, he just seems like another Tyler Smith to me, and I just don't reckon much to him, to be honest with you. Um, so the striker front, sticking with that sort of a um, topic. Now, Charlie Wyke, there's not been a murmur about Charlie Wyke since he's come back from his stag do with Gilead. So that, that's a bit um, frustrating how quiet that's gone uh, because I thought this week it probably would be announced and we've heard nothing, um, or I haven't seen nothing anyway. Uh, but Harry Smith, there's lots of talk about him since he got released by Sutton. I suppose this is a fan rumour. And it is a sign I'd absolutely love to sign, to be honest. He's my ideal. I'd probably rather have him than Charlie White because he's younger, he's a bit more athletic, even though he probably isn't the quickest player, but he's... Um, with his uh, younger side to him than Charlie Wyke and his less injury problems, you know, that, that that's something that you can have over him. Uh, decent goal record as well to say it's it's coming from a side who got relegated with Sutton and the mid-table side with Sutton before then. Uh, and he's right up there with aerial stats and right up there with Andy Cook with aerial stats. So I think he'd be an unbelievable player to bring in to compete with Andy Cook. Um, but I just feel like there'll, there'll be other interest from him at our level. Uncle, you know what... Um, 
so Matthew Stevens has signed for Wimbledon. Okay, I'm I'm not fussed about him. Yeah, twenty one, twenty two were good, but since then, you know, he's, he's no he's no good. He's not competition for Cook. He'd be competition for Kavanagh and those. Um, but I'm bringing him up because I'm pretty sure we were linked to him a couple of weeks ago, and a few fans are sort of saying, "Oh, that could be something we we could do." But uh, I, I'm not too convinced about him recently, to be honest with you. Joe Sparrow signing for Doncaster. I'm jealous of that, to be honest with you. He will be a success there. Uh, suits their system, but if I'm being honest, I said it'd be like a nice dessert to have after your after your main meal. You know, it's 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 something that you, you don't always need, but it's something you want. And I would have wanted Sabara, but we don't need him. Finally, for this section, Isaac Hayden. I think it's Isaac anyway. Um, I, I'd I'd rather have Burn to be honest with you. I think I'm a big believer of uh, availability is the best ability. And for me, with Isaac Hayden, he's not available enough. He gets loads of injuries. I'm not fussed about him anyways. As a player, I think he's um, on his day, yeah, fantastic centre-back. But, um, I, like I said, I'd rather have Neil Byrne. And his wages w would have been quite high as well. So, um, you know, I look forward to seeing him play 15 games next season for Carlisle. Uh, moving on then into the last uh, bit of the of the video then. Mystery left-back. All we're talking about is this mystery left-back that's coming in. It was thrown up in the air with Adam Williams from the City event. I talked about it last week and it sort of carried on today, um, this Sunday, with Alan Nixon um, talking about this Oliver Brain Bainbridge. Um, now, he, he looks like he's um, a, pros a high prospect from Sunderland. Now, Sunderland have a fantastic academy. Their fans and sort of media talking about him quite highly. Um, but it's not something I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of loaning in a player of um, 18 years of age because who hasn't made a competitive game, uh, game or start for anyone and it's a huge risk and you're just going off under 20s and you know category um, academy games and I think that's a huge risk on a loan whereas if you're signing him yeah it's a big risk because there's fees involved and bonuses and what have you and you know anything can go wrong but if it goes right there's a much bigger reward whereas if it goes wrong and it's a loan you know, you, you've not got the fact on that you've got you've not got on your side that you can develop them and then you can sell them on. So you're playing them at your own reward. Whereas if you're playing someone who's poor, you you're only rewarding the other team. And you know, I mean, if if he's bad, it's not much of a reward for him, is it anyway? So it's it's a risk. And but for me, if it is a permanent, which it won't be, that would probably be Richards out. But it, I mean, either way, it probably is Richards out because I, I can't see him wanting to be a backup. Um, but I just think. Yeah, if you're going to bring in someone as a backup, young lad like him, but then go and bring in a Sarula, an Adebisi, uh Tom Pierce, a uh, 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 Ben Williams, I think his name is from Cheltenham, bring in someone of that quality t to come through, uh, and then you've got great competition in that area. Um, but I, I don't think we will. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below on this week's transfer updates. Let me know your thoughts if you'd sign any of these or any, any other rumours that you've heard going around as well that I missed or that I can mention next week or if you are in the know, let me know. Let me, let me know what you're in the know with and uh, I can give you a mention or I can keep it hush hush if you would like. Um, so yeah, let, let me know your thoughts on anything re regarding anything in the comments down below. Uh, like the video if you did, subscribe if you're new, Wonder Road to 450 subscribers, all support's massively appreciated. I think we're 14 subscribers away now from 450, so thank you very much, thank you for watching, have a good one.